Welcome to another episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. My name is David East. And I'm Sumit Jandel. Today, we are here to answer your questions from YouTube, Stack Overflow, Twitter, and basically wherever you've asked questions. So if you want your question answered, you know what to do. Hashtag Ask Firebase. Today, we're answering questions on three topics. First, using audiences in analytics and remote config. Second, styling your site based on remote config conditions. And lastly, Firestore backups. Let's get started. This first question comes from Twitter, and it says, I'm struggling to understand the best solution to show customer offers for users using Firebase. Should I be using audiences, or should I be using a database lookup to match the offer to customer attributes? Any help would be much appreciated. Hashtag ask Firebase, hashtag Google, hashtag Firebase. Well, that's a great question. And actually, either of those solutions will work. But let's take a look at audiences, because that might be the easiest to implement for this use case. Now, for those who don't know about audiences, they exist within analytics and are user segments you can create based on what your users have done in your app before. For example, let's say I want an audience of purchasers, those users who have purchased something in my app before. I can create an analytics audience to represent them. I can do the same for non-purchasers. Now, using that in combination with remote config, I can actually control when I want to show offers to my users and which offers I want to show them by combining remote config parameters with those audiences as a condition. So for example, let's say my purchaser's audience. I could say for them, I'll set a remote config parameter that will show them offers for ski boots and maybe other ski gear if they've bought that kind of stuff before in my app. For my non-purchasers, maybe I won't show any offers at all, or for my purchasers of other stuff, like let's say soccer or summer sports, I might show offers related to summer sporting gear. So the easiest option really is to use these audiences in combination with remote config conditions. Uh, that's a great question. Thanks for sending it. Tip of the week. Use remote styles to style your site based upon remote config conditions. So many years ago, I worked on a news site where we would commonly update the site theme for holidays and other important events. We would give super users special features, and then admins and authors needed their own set of styles and features. And though the way we did this was, uh, well, it was not great. We would do manual deploys the day of, which would be really problematic. We would also include all of the styles in the main style sheet, whether the user needed it or not. What we really needed to do was use something like remote config. And recently, I built a library that allows you to store CSS in remote config and load it based upon remote config conditions. Let's take a look to see how it works. So I have this news site with all these important stories, but it has this banner at the top. And this banner is where I can communicate important things like breaking stories or maybe even a sale that's going on. And I want to customize what happens on the fly with remote config. So here in my app, I have a reset CSS, I have some Google fonts and some base styles. And then right here is my banner link where I want to do my customization. So I want to get set up with remote config and remote styles. So to do this, the first thing I want to do is grab the Firebase SDK, which I'm going to do from the hosted scripts that are provided by Firebase hosting. And I want to make sure to defer this so they all happen in correct order. So Firebase app, remote config, and analytics if you're going to be using user properties. Now I'll create my own script called customize.js. And let's create that inside of the public folder. I'm going to wrap everything in an async function because that allows me to use async await, and at least until top level await is a thing. And then from here, I'm going to initialize my Firebase app with window.firebase.initialize app and providing my config. Window is implicit, though, so you don't totally need it. So now that I have my Firebase app, I'm going to get an instance of remote config. And from here, I can get the banner link with document.query selector. And now I want to initialize remote config. And to do this, I'm going to call a method called fetch and activate. So fetch and activate will grab the config over the network and make sure that it is the active configuration being used. Now I want to get the actual banner message, which I have not created yet in the console, but I'll give it a key of banner. So let's go and do that. 
So I'm going to add a parameter, call it banner, and I'll just say this is a banner or something like that. But instead, I want to do it as JSON because that way I can have more rich values, such as providing the URL of the banner, then the message of the banner. And then also I can provide whether this is enabled by setting just a simple Boolean flag. So I'm going to add this parameter, but before any of this is applied, I want to make sure I've published my changes. So now back in my app, I want to get this banner message. So I want to parse it using json.parse because it's coming back as a string still, but I want it as an object. And then from here, I can use those object properties for the banner. So the href, the text content as the message. So now we can see here, nothing is happening. Why is that? Well, remote config caches your configuration. So while in development, we want to set the minimum fetch interval millis to something very, very low, but make sure you put a comment in there only for development. Now this is going to work, but let's add styles in before we go back to the browser. So what I'd like to do is set the styles of banner link. So banner link .styles .background color. but instead of hard coding that, I'll use remote styles. And I'm going to get remote styles from unpackaged, which is a CDN that hosts lots of great JavaScript libraries that get published on NPM. So make sure to use this link right here. So now I'm going to grab remote styles from the window and call the initialize method. And that takes in a Firebase app. And what remote styles does is it actually replaces the need for calling fetch and activate because it does it underneath the hood. And it's async as well, so we call await, but it returns a function called get styles, which we can use to get, well, our CSS styles. So let's say we wanted to get our breaking news styles. Well, we can do that by calling get styles and providing the key, which we will create in just a second as breaking news styles. And from here, I can get the property as a string, I can get its style sheet, but what I really wanna do is call insert to apply these styles. So I'm going to take these colors I have stored in my project and save them to remote config. So I'm going to set our key, if you can remember, breaking underscore news underscore styles, and then I can paste them in right as a string and then click add a parameter and publish. So now when I refresh here in the browser, we can see that the color is different and we have the different banner message as well. And the way this works underneath the hood, it uses adopted style sheets, which is a newish Chrome API. And we can see that here it is right here. We have our rule BG breaking. And when I refresh the page, that's only when the styles are applied, which is great for page load performance. Now to make things a little bit more dynamic, I'm going to apply a condition to the parameter. So this is the random 50 condition. And if we look at it, we can see we can give it a custom color, and then we also can give this condition certain uh, settings. So we can say that it has a user in a random percentile of 50%. So now I'm going to apply this condition to my parameter. And so when I add the random 50, it's going to say that half the users get one value and the other half get this other value. So I'm going to change half of it to do a sale. And we can say save 40% off of our premium plan today. But with the other half, I actually want to disable it because I don't want it to show up at all because I'm just going to use the one that's already loaded on the page. And now I'll do the same thing for the styles where I will give it a condition of random 50 where if the condition applies, you'll get the breaking styles. Otherwise, you'll get nothing because that way it's just what's available on the page. So now I'm going to check to see if the banner is enabled. If it's enabled, then I will apply the properties. Otherwise, we know that it'll just use whatever's loaded on the page. So when I refresh, sometimes it's nothing because of the random 50%. Other times we get our new styles. And this is a really great way to configure your app without having to redeploy. So using remote styles, we can store CSS in remote config and then trigger it based upon remote config conditions, which is a lot better than just doing random deploys the day of. One, two, three. Was it worth it? Next question. This next question actually came from two people, Tim Mill on Twitter and Shreyas Patil on YouTube. Tim Mill asked, hashtag as Firebase, is an automated Firestore database backup and restore solution coming anytime soon? And Shreyas asked, will Firestore database support import and export facility as the real-time database does with a JSON file? 
Well, that's a great question. Now, there isn't an automated on-off switch for doing Firestore database backup and restores just yet, but we're investigating it. Today, you can do imports and exports using the gcloud command line utility. This utility uses cloud storage in order to process the imports and exports. And another feature this utility also provides is exporting your Firestore data to BigQuery for complex querying and analysis. But for that last part, we do have a Firebase extension that can export any Firestore collection to BigQuery in real time. And so that might be more like the on-off switch you're thinking about. There's a link in the description to that extension so you can find out more. And that is all we have for you today. If you want us to answer more questions, send them to us on YouTube, Twitter, and Stack Overflow. Just remember to include that hashtag, AskFirebase, and we'll see you on the next episode.